My name is Joshua Corbin. I'm a principal investigator in the Center for Neuroscience Research at Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C. My lab is interested in understanding the genes that are involved in specification of neurons that comprise the amygdala and hypothalamus. In this study, we focused on a specific developmental regulated gene, DBX1, and its role in the specification of neurons that comprise the hypothalamus. What we found was that DBX1 is required for specification of orexigenic neurons and subsequent HPA axis function involving stress-related behaviors. The highlights of this work are going to be shown to you by Kate and Kevin, two individuals who are involved in this project. I'm Katie Sokolowski, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Corbin's lab. And I really enjoyed working on this project because it told a story on three separate levels. First, from the genetic patterning mechanisms to circuits, and then finally behavior. So for the genetic patterning mechanisms, we were really interested in what were the genes that our transcription factor, DBX1, was actually regulating. And in order to do this, we had to take hypothalamic tissue from mice lacking this gene, DBX1, um, and compare it to control mouse tissue from the hypothalamus, ran them on a microarray screen. So what we got back was a list of candidate genes that we later verified using in C2 hybridization. And what we found was uh, the genes with the most striking changes were PMCH, HCRT, and AGRP. And this was really interesting to me because these were all genes found in different groups of orexigenic neurons found in the hypothalamus, and they all were, had known functions in stress and feeding behaviors. So with this uh, loss of these orexigenic neurons during development, we wondered if, um, as, as the brain progressed into the adult, uh, did the brain somehow compensate for this loss? So in order to do this, we uh, asked Dr. Kevin Jones to test the function of these neurons in the adult brain. Hi, I'm Kevin Jones, a former postdoc of the Corbin Lab and assistant professor of biology in the biology department at Howard University. I'm a neurophysiologist and one of my primary interests is in understanding how intrinsic genetic programs interact with external signals to modulate the physiological maturation of neurons. So I was really excited to collaborate on this project. Specifically, I wanted to assess the function of the lateral hypothalamus in the DBX1 conditional knockout mice. Previous work had shown that PMCH and HCRT expressing neurons in the lateral hypothalamus exhibit dramatic increases in spontaneous spike rates in the presence of high or low concentrations of glucose. We therefore hypothesized that if the numbers of PMCH expressing neurons was reduced in the lateral hypothalamus of the DBX1 conditional knockout animals, then perhaps the glucose sensing ability of the lateral hypothalamus might also be impaired in these animals. To address this question, we recorded local field potentials from the lateral hypothalamus of acutely isolated brain sections. The brain sections were oriented on a planar 60-channel multi-electrode array such that the spiking activity of the entire lateral hypothalamus could be captured. Our results demonstrate that the spike density of the lateral hypothalamus in the DBX1 conditional knockout mice were reduced in both low and high concentrations of glucose. These data correlate well with our molecular findings and support our overall hypothesis that conditional knockout of the DBX1 transcription factor impairs glucose sensing in the lateral hypothalamus. It was really cool that there was the collective function of these neurons was altered, which led us to the next question of, is the neural network that these cells belong to, is that altered as well? So the PMCH, the HCRT, and even the AGRP neurons form a stress and feeding circuit within the HPA axis, or the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And in order to look at the function of this circuit, we had to look at its response to stressful stimuli. So we either exposed animals to predator odor or fasted them to stimuli that activate this circuit, and then looked at a readout of cellular activation, CFOS. So now we have this developmentally expressed transcription factor, DBX1, that specifies the PMCH and the AGRP neurons. And without DBX1, these neurons don't function properly within the HPA axis. So we next wondered if, um, are these effects strong enough to impact behaviors themselves? When you expose normal mice to a predator odor, they exhibit this stereotypical cautious or escape behaviors towards that odor. And this was lacking in our conditional knockout mice. Additionally, these conditional knockout mice ate a lot less than their control counterparts after they were fasted. 
and they're resistant to obesity. So these results were really incredible, suggesting that the removal of this developmental transcription factor, DBX1, had huge impacts on the effects of adult behaviors, like stress and feeding, long after the expression of the gene ceased. So what you heard in summary uh, from Kate and Kevin is a collection of data that spans from embryonic patterning mechanisms to circuit formation all the way up to behavior. So what we found in summary is that the single gene, DBX1, which is only expressed during a transient window of development during embryogenesis, sets in motion a program in which neurons are specified that are part of the HPA axis. These neurons are misspecified in the absence of DBX1, and in their absence, there is a defect in specific subsets of innate behaviors, that is, those that are related to innate stress and in our hands, what we showed was that this is innate responses to stressful feeding situations, as well as innate predator odor responses. In turn, we found that DBX1 does not regulate a host of other behaviors from which, that are hypothalamic based. So this suggests that there may be other developmental programs that are non-DBX related that set in motion the developmental uh, progression to specify those sets of neurons that are required for different innate behaviors.